All right, good morning. It's Tuesday. I just wanted to uh, make another video. I'm going to do it as quickly as I can. I'm going to talk fast. I'm going to try to make these shorter, okay? Um, first things first, coming into this video, you should have written down all of your significant figure rules and the backside, the rules for multiplication, division, and addition and subtraction. If you haven't done that or you haven't printed out that file that I've given you, stop this. Okay, stop it right now, write them down, print it out, come back, and we'll pick it up. Okay? All right, so if you've done that, great. We're going to continue. Here we go. <clears throat> Quick review. All non-zero numbers are significant. The 3, the 3, and the point two are all significant. So if I said how many significant figures are in this number, 33.2, you would say 3. Zeros between non-zero numbers count. Okay, they count. Leading zeros, leading zeros never count. So these things never count. So this number only has two significant figures. Trailing zeros have a couple rules. Okay, if they come after a decimal, to the right of a decimal, they count. These are trailing zeros, zeros that come after a number. This trailing zero on the 540, this zero counts because it has a decimal. But if it didn't have a decimal, it wouldn't count. So right now, this has three significant figures with the decimal. If you got rid of the decimal, it would only have two. Okay? So let's do a quick review. Quick review here. 34. How many significant figures are in 34? Well, the 3 counts. It's non-zero. The 4 counts. It's non-zero. There's 2. Five hundred and sixty-four. They all count. So that would be 1, 2, 3. How about 19.3? 19.3. How many significant figures? Then 1 and the 9 count, and the point 3, that counts as well, right? Even though the decimal's there, don't get confused. It's a non-zero number. It counts. 23.45, I think you know the answer there. The 2, the 3, the 4, and the 5, four significant figures. How about 101? There's a 0. Does it count? Yes, because it's captured. It's between two non-zero numbers, so there are three. Okay, how about number six? I want you to look at number six. 0 0.021, how many significant figures and why? You should say two. Leading zeros, whether there's a decimal or not, usually there's always a decimal, but leading zeros never count. Here's trailing zeros, 6,400. Do you see a decimal? I do not. So these trailing zeros do not count. The six and the four do. There's only two significant figures in 6,400. 6, How about this one? Well, let's go piece by piece. These, first of all, there's a couple rules. These zeros are between a non-zero number, so they count. That's rule. That's one way of looking at it. This zero counts because there's a decimal. This zero counts because it's to the right of a decimal. So how many significant figures are in this number? 50.06, there are four. I know I'm going fast. You can watch this as many times as you want. Slow it down. Or certainly ask me questions at any time. So why are we doing all this significant figure stuff? Well, if I take 62, and I take my little, I like these little dollar store calculators. I take my dollar store calculator, right? And I put 62, and I say divided by 41. 62 divided by 41, and I hit equals. That number right there pops out of this calculator. Well, I'm just going to, let's just do some common sense. How many significant figures are in 62? There's two. 
How many significant figures are in 41? There's two. How many significant figures are in the answer? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. That doesn't make sense. You've probably asked yourself before when, you, when this has happened, do I use all these numbers when they pop out of this calculator? Do I use all of them? Number could even be longer. This is just a dollar store calculator. Your scientific calculators could, could be a lot longer number after the decimal. Do I use all the numbers? I don't think I do, Mr. Pierce. Okay, then where do you cut the number off at? Well, you don't just get to guess. There is a rule. Oop. There is a rule. That S shouldn't be there. There is a rule where to cut and round numbers. There is a rule. And we need to know the significant figures of each number to know where to cut and round a number now. Okay? There are rules on where, where do you cut this thing off and where do you start rounding. So I'm just going to take... For granted that you have these rules. I'm going to go over them really quickly, okay? So for multiplication and division, right? Multiplication and division, there's a rule. And there's another rule for addition and subtraction. There's really two rules. Multiplication and division, addition and subtraction will cover, oh God, it'll cover all of your significant figures, needs until, oh gosh, probably until your second year of college. Okay, so that's, that's plenty, right, for now, to get started with. Multiplication and division, here's the rule. You, you do the math. You just stick the number in as it is on your uh, in your calculator and you compute the math. Then you must look at the significant figures of each number. And you use the smallest number of significant figures in the numbers that you have. Okay, and that's, you say, okay, my answer is going to have um, two significant figures because one of the numbers, the lowest amount of significant figures is two. And then you got to, um, we're not even doing this yet. We're going to put it in scientific notation. I'm just teaching you how to do significant figures right now. Okay, that's for multiplication and division. For addition and subtraction, it's a little different. You do the math. But then you look at the, the number with the least amount of digits after the decimal. We'll go through that. Okay. So let's get started again. Here we are. 62 divided by 41. It's the same problem we talked about. Put it in the dollar store calculator. Out pops this giant number with 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 significant figures. How many significant figures are in the answer. Where do I round this thing? Well, remember the, remember the rule. The rule said that you have to look at the significant figures of each individual number. So 62, the six counts and the two counts is significant. That has two significant figures. 41 has two significant figures. The lowest number between two and two is two. Okay. So the answer has two significant figures. 62 has two, 41 has two. So the answer is here. It's going to have two significant figures. So let's look at the answer. One is a significant number, five is a significant number. We're gonna cut this thing off right there. Two significant figures. But before we can just drop the rest of this, we have to look at the next digit and see how it affects us in rounding. I am going to assume that all of you chemistry students know how to round. This is a one. It does not route, change the five. So the correct answer for 62 divided by 41 is 1.5 okay it's 1.5 we must look at the one the one does not round up the five so 
so it's just 1.5. Another one. 782 divided by 231. Hopefully you're already looking at it and saying how many significant figures are in each number. I will give you the answer that pops out of my dollar store calculator. And see if you can now figure out what the correct answer is with the correct way of using significant figures to cut off an answer and round correctly. Seven eighty two has three significant figures. Two thirty one has three significant figures. How many significant figures are in the answer? Three. One, two, three, it's right there. We have to chop it off there, but the five does change the eight to a nine, so your correct answer is 339. Last one right here. Twelve nineteen divided by thirty four sixty two. You've got one two three four divided by one two three four. The answer is going to have four. There's your answer. Leading zeros never count. One two three four. The zero does not round the one, so the prep the correct answer is going to be zero point three five. To one. Remember, you keep it there. Even though it doesn't count as significant, you can't just throw this away. You must keep it in your answer still. This just tells us where to chop off the end. Okay. I'm going to do one final one. Let's take this problem. 62,881 divided by 97. A little different. They're not the same amount of significant figures in the problem. I'm going to give you what pops out of the calculator. See if you can figure out what the proper answer is for this equation. How many significant figures are in this number? One, two, three, four, five. There's five here. How many are here? Two. The answer can only have the least amount of significant figures between the numbers. That is two. So this number can only have two significant figures. So that would be one and two. So the rest of this has to be chopped off. This has to be chopped off right there. Does the eight influence the four? Yes. So it's going to make the four a five. So it's going to be six, five, zero. And you don't have to go any further and put point zero, 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 zero on there or anything like that. Okay. So if you look at if you look at this presentation of mine and walk through it, that would be great. I don't have enough time. I'm already 14 minutes into this just showing you a few of these. Three significant figures. We didn't point, put point there because that would make, I'm sorry, two significant figures. I didn't put a decimal here because that would make a three. I didn't put point zero zero because it would be to the right of the decimal. Those would all be significant. But the only way you can make this number have two significant figures is to round the 4 to a 5, make that a 0, and call it 650. Hope that's not too confusing. Have a great day. I'm going to cut this short. Bye-bye.